tracks are so crazy and, and they're so fun to drive on when you put on such a good show. This is its own beast. I mean, you have to take it for what it is. Jericho's is cool in the event that it's basically it's the driver skill level. It's not how the car is set up. It makes the driver's uh, talent really shine. It's sometimes funny watching people come in a little more confident and, and uh, kind of get a reality shock when they get in these cars. I tell you what, I was uh, you know within half a lap at San Diego's reality check for me. So I don't know. I think a lot of people come in here and are brought back down to earth. You come here to win, and you know it's a lot of fun out there. Just outside Minneapolis, the Snow Baron Snowmobile Club is hosting for the 49th year Hay Days, the largest snowmobile event in the world. It's at this unique event that Terra Cross once again hits the track, showcasing some of the best drivers from off-road truck racing, X Games, and the action sports world racing in stock Polaris Razor 1000 machines on a Supercross style course. Hi everybody, I'm Kevin Barnett. This is race number four of the 2015 Terra Cross Championship Series. One driver who is always all in taking the winter bust approach is RJ Anderson. He's been atop the podium twice, but he's still learning the fine art of racing Terracross. Coming into heydays, I've won a couple races, but I've also DNF'd the other half. You know, finding that medium balance, or if I could just finish, you know, in the top three or top five every time, I'd probably end up with more points. Still looking for his first win is the 2014 Terracross overall champion, Jason Luberg. The current overall points leader in 2015, Luberg has consistency but wants to taste victory. Winning is not easy in Terracross. The field is deep with talent like Mickey Thomas. Winner of the first stop of the season. Local favorite seven-time X Games gold medalist Levi Lavalley, X Games medalist Ronnie Feist, and X Games gold medalist Colton Moore, who is on track now with my broadcast partner, Paul Thacker. <laughs> wow, so I'm alongside Colton Moore and we just went over one of the gnarliest sections of track, the Mystic Mangler. What goes through your head before you come up and hit this thing, man? I get a little nervous. This is the gnarliest part of the track, so just trying to make sure no one's in front of you, because if you do, you're not going to see him until you're on him. Wow. Hey, man, <laughs> I, I appreciate that and for the ride. Hey, good luck today. Tear it up out Thanks. there, bud. Yeah, buddy. Through three races, Jason Luberg with a two-point lead. RJ Anderson and Mickey Thomas are right on his heels. You can see Colton Moore still in contention there in eighth inside the top 10. As we look at our course now, this is how it lays out here in North Branch. Paul, give us the keystone keys to the course. You can see right off the bat, hard left-hander. That inside line's been so hot. Over the freestyle landing jump, big floater. That's a really cool feature. Into these, I don't know, ant hills, I guess you'd call them? Some sort of insect. Some sort of, right into the Fox Proving Grounds. There's a lot of action in here. Into my favorite part of the track, the Mystic Mangler. That thing is gnarly. To our finish line jump, big over under section. Great feature again on the track. Sets you up a couple of corners, brings us into what I think is the biggest game changing part of the track. That's the Walker Evans whoops. A lot of things happening in there, a lot of passes. Most of the men's field already set for the main event. We have two LCQs remaining. Top two drivers from each will transfer. Let's go down to the third member of our team on grid now, Aaron Bates with Ronnie Feist. It's the first full season for Ronnie Feist, the freestyle motocross legend, to be racing this Terracross yeah. series. Now, Ronnie, take us through how you transfer your two-wheeled experience to come over here and race four-wheel experience on a track like this. I basically just jumped in this thing, put it in gear, and been trying to learn how to drive it ever since. <laughs> How's it working out for you? Uh, not as good as I hoped. Obviously, you can see them in the LCQ, and uh, they're taking two out of this, so that's the goal. I'm just going to go for it, hopefully get in for the main. If anyone can make it happen, Ronnie Feist is the guy to get it done. LCQ number one in the offing here, Josh Cobb out of Phoenix, Arizona, in the KC Highlights number 66. Next to him will be Cole Couture in the Hanco Utilities 21. Here we go, standby. Driver out of Wisconsin. Next to him, Mitch Guthrie Jr. in the 23. Walker Evans racing driver. One of the big young talents in off-road racing. And bringing up the back, Scott McFarland and Ronnie Feist. Feist, Rockstar and OSTFF getting into the races. <laughs> Everybody a little jumpy. Starter and we're good. Green flag waves. 
LCQ number one, two spots up for grabs in the main event. Once again, Mitch Guthrie, great jump off the line, sticks that whole shot. So it's Mitch Guthrie Jr. through the first couple of turns. Cole Katu in second, 66. That's oh, Josh Cole in Cole third, Katu. Katu. Got a little squirrely there, ended up off the track. Let's everybody buy. <laughs> so Cole Katu maybe kills his chances of making a main event. But the chances oh. improve for 66, Josh Cobb. Look at these guys coming over the Mystic Mangler. Mitch Guthrie Jr., an easy time on the over-under. Couple of right-hand turns, he'll find himself in the Walker Evans whoops. Three lane choices out on that section of the track. What do you like best in these heat races, inside, middle, or outside? Uh, you know, at, at first the inside looked really fast, but you know, they've, they've, the course designers really did a good job of making three really equal lines. You gotta take a different line if you're gonna pass somebody, but it's, it's hard to tell which one's fastest. Mitch Guthrie Jr. just checking out. This is a young man who is just moving up in the desert racing scene. He did his first ever Vegas to Reno best in the desert race. Moved his truck from 20th to 7th. There's Buggy. Wow. That's, uh, <laughs> that's nothing to shake your head at. Makes his way through the Fox Proving Grounds, and it's the Mystic Mangler. No problem for the 23. This is what you want to watch. The battle for second. Only two transfer to the main. Cobb's in that transfer spot right now, but McFarlane, you know he wants to get there. Oh, oh going a little Ronnie. too far! <laughs> Ronnie Feist to go GoPro on board with Cole Katu, who had that problem early. I think Cole Katu might have got in the back of Ronnie off, off that uh, over under, and Cole's, Cole's charging, charging hard. Walker Evans whoops on the inside for Cole Katu. And up front, it's the inside. Mitch Guthrie Jr. Mitch is driving a pretty clean race right now. Stretching that lead out a bit. You know, there's, it, there's a fine line. You know, you want to drive fast, make sure you get in that main, but you also want to save your equipment. You're putting more laps on than, than the other guys that are already qualified. So you got to be a little bit careful. Cobb and McFarland, about two seconds between them. Three laps to go in this LCQ number one. Top two transfer to our main event. There's Katsu back in the picture. Boy, oh, he is driving charging. the wheels off that <laughs> razor. Look at that. He's up to the fourth. So he's, man, I tell you what, he's got some laps left to see what he can, see what he can do with these last three. Remember, these are identically prepared factory Razor Polaris 1000s. Pull one off the showroom floor for yourself and go do a little racing. The 2015 Terracross Championships on CBS Sports Network is being brought to you by Polaris Razor. By Mystic Lubricants, the official racing lubricant of Terracross. Learn more at mysticlubes.com. And by GoPro the world's most versatile camera. Round four of the 2015 Terracross Championship. Kevin Barnett and Paul Thacker, along with Aaron Bates, bringing the action from North Branch, Minnesota, and it's Mitch Guthrie, Jr. Kid who started driving at age 11 in short course trucks, dominating on course. Yeah, he's really one of our young guns here at the Terracross Championship. And fun to watch. <laughs> the, the kid's got just unbelievable potential. He's definitely going to be one to watch for a lot of years to come. Uh, it's so smooth as we go pro on board once again with Mitch Guthrie Jr. Look at him pilot that factory Razor 1000. Yeah, you can just tell by his body language how relaxed he is in that machine right now. That's a, that's a guy that's got a lot of confidence on the track. Guthrie Jr. happy up front behind him. Cole Katsu is in a battle, but it's with a lapper. Ronnie Feist is not really part of this race. Kolka, too, would like to make a move forward, but he's going to have to get around the lapper first. And Feist is not playing the role well here. 
this is some pretty tight racing, fantastic stuff. So Ronnie Feist, he is a lapper, but he's given Cole Katu all he can handle as we go pro on board with Cole Katu once again. And Cole Katu, he's such an impressive driver from the back row to second place. Still looking to get around Feist. He's going to have to find a different line. One more time through the Fox Proving Grounds. Here comes the Mangler. Cole Katu looks like he'll come home in a solid second place. But the win goes to Mitch Guthrie Jr. up front that 23. He will move out of the LCQ into the main event along with Cole Katu. Definite celebration for Mitch Guthrie Jr., one of the top young drivers in the world. As we look back at the start of this one, Cole Katu was almost up and out early. What a recovery for him to come home in second with a transfer spot. LCQ number one in the books. That means we have LCQ number two coming up. In our main event, LCQ number two will settle it. Five drivers in competition. Let's give you a look at LCQ number two. Mike Johnson in an 881 bad endorsements ride out of Minnesota. Next to him, Mike Gardner in the eight Super ATV Walker Evans. And on the pole position, Levi LaValle. We asked him earlier who he's hoping to beat, Tara Cross. Yeah, who am I hoping to beat? I'm just, anybody out there is all I'm trying to beat, you know. I'm, I'm pretty new at uh, the Terracross game and, and it's uh, definitely a learning curve for me. But, it, you know, it's, I just want to get out there and, and just try to limit the mistakes I make. I say Levi, he looked strong yesterday. I watched him in his heat race and he was getting it, dude. He was racing like he was in the main. This is a, a new thing for me. I've only been riding the, the Polaris Razors for about a year now. People are just trying to, they definitely want to beat me because I'm a hometown guy. But, you know, to hear that, it's, you know, it's actually, in honor just because they think they think of me as somewhat of a threat which uh which is surprising oh there you go good you enjoying heydays always are you a veteran heyday -er? yeah <laughs> oh, it's just cool it's cool having it in minnesota just where uh you know i only live a couple hours from here so it's always nice you see a lot of people uh, a lot of people you remember from the racing, and, and for us, it's like your winter family is here. I, I love that. They, they just want to beat me. Well, it doesn't take much. <laughs> he's the hometown dude, and uh, he looks fast, so I definitely think uh, he's going to be up there for sure. No doubt a hometown hero as well. As Hubert Rowland, everyone's favorite redneck, is in the 615, and Jim Beaver, good UTV radio star from the Down and Dirty Radio Show. Five drivers, LaValle with the inside track for sure. <laughs> Mike Gardner getting a little antsy there, but looks like, looks like Levi's gonna, once again, that inside line's been so good for the whole shot. Gardner to the outside. On the inside, big move by the 881 of Mike Johnson. Johnson into second. Johnson to the inside here on these anthills. Boy, blowing oh it apart <laughs> off the top. Coming through hot, Mike Johnson is. Fox proving grounds, upsetting the buggies just a bit. Whoa, and then hucking it. Whoa. Gardner and Johnson both sending it over the Mystic Mangler. First time in the over-under, it's Johnson following LaValle. Boy, LaValle really hanging it on those berms. Yeah, he's definitely pushing it, trying to put his 108 Polaris Razor in the final. Look at that, these guys coming around into the Walker Evans whoops, all three taking completely different lines. Experimenting early in LCQ number two, LaValle looks like he got the best of that as he stretches out just a bit as we go pro on board with the Snowcross legend. <laughs> That's such a cool shot. Coming over that roller, you just get that little hang time where you just defy gravity for a second. The longest jump for a UTV is 170 feet. That's R.J. Anderson holds that record. How about Levi LaValle's record on a snowmobile? 412. Yeah, he was, uh, he, he was on it that night. That was a big jump. Yeah, nobody even remembers who used to hold that record, huh? Yeah, I believe, I believe that was me. It was a little bittersweet watching Levi break it, but I was happy to see him do it and do it safely. Levi trying to break records now in Terracross. And here comes Gardner. Oh. Oh, look at him up the inside. Nice move underneath, pushing Mike Johnson out. Makes that pass stick with authority. Mike on Mike, violence there. And now, oh goodness, the 881 uh, of Johnson out of gear. Popped out of gear there. 
So Gardner makes the pass and has some breathing room in that Super ATV Walker Evans ride. Man, Gardner's got that thing on rails right now. You can see him pulling up to Levi with <laughs> quickness. And he has it in a transfer position, all important to get to the main event. The question is, will he push it to go for the lead and attack Levi LaValle? Last two spots about to be filled for our main event race for 2015 Terra Cross. The 2015 Terracross Championship continues from North Branch, Minnesota. Kevin Barnett alongside Paul Thacker and Aaron Bates. It's Levi LaValle, the hometown hero, out front right now as we're GoPro on board with him as he negotiates the Mystic Mangler and the other massive jumps on this course. The track builders did an amazing job this weekend. The, it just It's such a cool track, a lot of unique features, a lot of fun. Maybe LaValle's best corner right there as he slides into the right-hander. Yeah, he's looking like he's a professional razor driver. Good for Levi. In second, this is Mike Gardner. He made the move early in that Super ATV Walker Evans ride. Now he looks basically assured of having a spot. Yeah, and you talked about if he was going to push it. It looks like he's Mike Gardner's definitely let up a little bit. He's content with the second spot and going to the final. So LaValle, who qualified second for race number three, but had problems on the Mystic Mangler right away on lap one, has gone through a little rougher sequence here on day two in North Branch. But he will be in the main event and have another shot at a podium finish. Yeah, in Terracross racing, you can pretty much be sure of one thing, and that's you can't be sure of anything. Sure of nothing. <laughs> LaValle <laughs> thrills the crowd there, hucking it over the Mangler one more time. Right-hand turn, the checkers. Levi LaValle, Mystic Lubricants driver, takes the 108 to the main event. LaValle through and now Gardner. So the 108 and the 08 headed for the main event. Let's look at our Polaris power performer. Has to be Levi LaValle from the pole position. Absolutely, he had that great start. You can see him here navigating the Mystic Mangler with ease. He ran a really clean, solid race. Thumbs up indeed from the tuxedo clad driver. He's down with Aaron. Levi LaValle meant all business during that LCQ. Congratulations on advancing into today's main event. However, you are going to be starting from the back of the pack. You continue to get this track dialed in. Is there a certain line choice that seems to be working better for you that you're planning on applying in today's main? I, I mean, there's definitely a fast line out there, and I'm sure that all the rest of the guys know which one it is. So the hard thing, though, is when you get all those all those players raises out there on the track, you know, it gets bunched up. So a lot of times you end up taking a bad line just to get around them because they're so bunched up. So when you're out there, it's just constant decision after decision. This line, that line, am I going to get bottled up? And, you know, you hope that you do it right. Levi LaValle, he is the hometown favorite. Good luck to you. Levi, don't forget to dust off that bow tie for our main event. Let's look at the starting grid for that main. Up front, you have the course designers, Dana Creech and Jason Luberg. And in fact, let's learn what it's like to bring a Terracross course to life. We changed the layout a lot this year. We've got some extra dirt to work with. It's turned out really good. It flows a lot better, it's a lot faster, but everybody's liking it so far. We put our heart and soul into this stuff, you know. It's uh, definitely our names on it, so we put everything we got into it to make it the best we can. Uh, it, it's a lot of fun being able to race on our own course. I mean, it's cool to get to build it. That's just as much fun as racing on it. And then racing on it's fun because, you know, we can see what's going on with it and change it and make it better for everybody. Building the course, you get some rewards, and I think one of the cooler things is when you get the comments back from some of the people, you know, this is the funnest track I've ever been on. You know, it's a good feeling that, you know, they enjoy the track that you built for them. I'd be lying if I said that uh, designing the course didn't give me a little bit of an edge.
Welcome back to round four of the Terracross Championship in 2015. Heyday is a special event, an extra special event added this year. We've been working for a few years. I've, I've driven razors with hand controls, really wanted to get back in a buggy. We've developed the Hero Class, powered by Monster Energy, bringing in some PTSD suffering veterans. We all get to bang a little bit. It's super great. This is epic, man. I can't even fathom this right now. I'm super happy that you guys are uh, are able to come out and be a part of this. So, yeah. and, and we, we can't thank you enough for having us. Yeah. Ready to take some razors for a rip? I am. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this. I was in the Army. You get to come out and do something none of us have ever done. Uh, so it, it, it means a lot. It's, it's special to all of us. Crazy all this is finally coming to fruition. I'm getting all choked up. Okay. No, but seriously, I'm getting choked up. That's the hand control one. We had gift bags full of you know, shirts, sweatshirts. We have our own helmets, goggles, pretty much everything we need for a day. It's like Christmas, I gotta tell you. This is cool. I mean, these guys are happy. They're, their spouses are happy. And to, to be able to have been responsible for making that happen, I'm telling you, that doesn't get much cooler than that. Ready to roll. Ready to roll. <laughs> I think we've we've got a cool platform to start a small fire and have it, you know, grow into something really big and amazing. I feel like any any of these guys we can touch in a positive manner, they're gonna go out and do the same thing. Driving the razor was awesome in itself, but the hospitality here has been uh, above uh, any expectations I've had. Uh, everybody's been so friendly, willing to talk to you, shake your hand. Uh, that's what I'm remembering. The support aspect of all this is uh, it's, it's awesome. One of the gentlemen was talking about he, he hasn't been around a crowd in two years. He's been home for two years and doesn't go out because it triggers his PTSD when he's around a lot of people. And he's like, the only reason I came out is because I wanted to do this. That's a pretty, that's a big step. This is surreal. You, you don't get to do this every day, and I'll probably never get to do it again. So this, this is just awesome. To be a part of this, Terracross and the, the new hero class, I am I'm honored. It's... <laughs> and that pretty much says it. It's, it's amazing. I, not, not a place I'd rather be. And it's just the beginning of a special program. Yeah, I totally agree, man. I can't wait to do some more of these, meet some more of these great veterans, and get a little more time on the track for myself. Yeah, you can't go wrong with that. All right, now it's time to set up our main event. First one of the day, it's the women's final, and it's been the unstoppable Sarah Price. She is 3-0 in 2015. However, Price has brought along a little competition who is down the line with her own Aaron Bates. Thanks, guys. Nitro Circus star Jolene Van Butte has made her debut at Terracross at round number three. And Jolene, you said that you were nervous coming into that event, but now that you've got one race under your belt coming into round number four, how are your nerves settled now? Uh, that's not much different. I'm still just as nervous, but uh, my driving has improved a lot and I feel a lot more comfortable, so I'm pretty confident in that. I just have to make sure to keep it on four wheels. More seat time for you. Best of luck on today's track. The key in any racing, rubber side down, boys and girls. Here it is, the women. Shelby Anderson, number five in the Walker Evans Racing UTV. Next to her, Sarah Price, 3-0, looking for 4-0 in the Optimus Starters Razor 1000 as we get a look at our Optimus Starters women's final start list. Vernola, responsible for putting Van Butte <laughs> upside down on the cage in that first event. We're underway. Women's final. Race number four, 2015 Terracross. And up front, no surprise, the 91 of Sarah Price. Right off the bat, Sarah nails the whole shot. I tell you what, she's she's a tough lady to beat on the track on a razor. She's driving really, really well. Who will be the first to pick off Price in 2015? Right now, Anderson and Van Vute are in second and third. And Anderson's shown that she's really got some speed and can actually drive with Sarah, but she's just let some mistakes keep her from, you know, taking Sarah down from the top podium spot. Well, Van Vute showed even in her rookie debut that she wasn't afraid to let those buggies sail as she hucked her Razor 1000 down into the corner after the over-under. You know, these women are so impressive. They drive these things so hard. Really a fun class to watch. We had some of the best racing action in race number three in the women's field. As the outside is popular here early on, the women's final. 
Price just ripping the berm. Looking like she's out there on her MX bike. And you know, you can see that these buggies have two drivers. So the, the, the ladies are driving the buggies, but they have an experienced driver, you know, maybe a boyfriend, co-driver, whatever the case may be, that's kind of helping guide, look like a navigator in a desert race truck. Fox Proving Grounds up next for Sarah Price as we go pro on board with the number 91. Mystic Mangler straight up. Smooth over that. What do you have to do? Do you hit the brake in the middle? Uh, you know, it's kind of a momentum thing. You you want to come at it fast, hit the brakes, but then let off the brakes so you, because if too much gas, you're going sailing over the top of that thing. <laughs> Van Vute looking smooth in third place, still trying to chase down Anderson. But as it has been in 2015, it is the Sarah Price Show. The 91 up front looking to make it four straight. for the 2015 Terracross Championships continues from North Branch, Minnesota. Kevin Barnett alongside Paul Thacker and Aaron Bates watching the women's final and it's Jolene Van Butte in her first weekend at Terracross putting some pressure on second place. Yeah, definitely improvement from race one, although I don't entirely blame the Jolene for her finish in the first race, but she's looking really good out there. Katie Vernola may or may not have had a little hand in Jolene Van Butte being turned over. But she has no pressure from behind right now. She is trying to get around. Oh. Now she's the aggressor, <laughs> giving Anderson a little tap up the inside. There's there's so much talent in this women's class. We've got, you know, obviously Sarah Price, Anderson, Jolene. You've got Fernola, and then you've got Amy Hood as well, who's a, a women's professional motocrosser and actually a championship level motocrosser. So. She's, she's going to be one to watch as she gets a little more seat time as well. That's a regular transition. Jolene Van Vute as we go GoPro on board once again with the Nitro Circus legend. She was the first ever Canadian women's motocross champion and has moved into a variety of things in her duties with the Nitro Circus. And she makes the pass on Shelby Anderson, and she's in the second. Looks like Jolene might have an issue, might have popped that thing out of gear. Anderson's going to go back by her. Oh, the Fox Proving Grounds proving to be trouble for Jolene Van Vute. Oh, she's going again. Jolene, does she have enough time to get back into that second spot? Right now she's on the podium, but you know she wants more than that. Well, the Rockstar Action Figures driver is going to have to push the number 63. You can see Shelby Anderson trying to get away, and that Walker Evans racing number five makes a bit of a mistake. Maybe Van Vute has a shot. But she's definitely closed that gap up. Look oh, flat just, tire oh, here no. for the number five. A left rear flat tire. Will that be a factor? Boy, those things are, they're, they're tough to drive, but you, you add a flat tire in the mix, that definitely is challenging. The Walker Evans whoops the different lines. Looks like Van Vute coming out ahead. So she's made the pass twice. Certainly the flat tire has something to do with it. And Van Vute looking good for second. White flag this time around for Sarah Price. She's one lap away from four in a row. Van Vuit stretching out just a bit. Mustic Mangler, smooth. Van Vuit getting comfortable quickly. Yeah, she's extremely talented. It's no big surprise that she's taken to this side-by-side -side racing with a quickness. One lap to go with a flat rear tire. Does Shelby Anderson have any shot at regaining? She's not going to stop pushing. You can see that buggy sliding out. But up front, it's Sarah Price uh, taking the uh, scenic route here. Yeah, you know, that outside line's actually pretty fast. You get to jump the entire hill instead of just rolling over it. Ends up being pretty similar line speed-wise. Sarah Price can just put it in reverse. Back it in for another win. Fox Proving Grounds one last time. Mystic Mangler floated over, salute the crowd, and head on to another victory. Yeah, four in a row for Sarah Price. She is the epitome of dominance this season. It's pretty fun to watch. 
Bryce Holman first. Jolene Van Vute. They're hucking it one more time. There's the Nitro <laughs> Circus Center. She's, she's going to be one to watch for future races, no doubt. So maybe in the future it'll be Jolene Van Vute challenging Sarah Price for a spot. She comes home in second. A look at the general insurance final results. A fourth win for Sarah Price. Let's go now to the Polaris winner's interview. The champ and the newcomer. Well, you guys, take a look at the smiles on these girls' faces. Very excited to be up here, but congratulations, Sarah Price. Your domination streak continues. Back-to-back -back victories here at Heydays for you. Dominated that, though. Take us through your run. Yeah, you know, uh, I started up front, and, uh, man, I just wanted to keep it together, like always, and just run a clean race, you know, just stay smooth. And uh, that's what I did, and I just kept looking ahead and doing what I can to tackle the track and come clean at the end. And that's what I did, and I'm happy to be here made it happen. Jolene, only your second race here at Terracross. You make your way up to second place position. As soon as you got out of your buggy, you looked at Sarah and said, thank you. Yeah. What do you owe all this thanks for? Uh, so, you know, Sarah's been telling me about racing these for many, many years, and I just haven't had the opportunity. She even invited me to go do a race with her last year, and I was on tour, and, you know, I've just it stoked that she was like, you know, come out, come out and ride with me. And I'll, she's been giving advice all, you know, through the races and talking lines. And she's just such a, you know, supportive, cool person. You guys have got me sold. I think I might have to jump in one of these. Well, you guys, we'll send it back to you. I don't know who's going to do the podium interview of Aaron Podiums. What are we going to do then? Let's look at the season points here. Sarah Price leads four victories, 136 points. Anderson and Vernola, though, still in the picture in the 2015 Terracross Championship. The men now starting to take center stage for the final. And you see the on-course action. What happens off-course to get these vehicles ready? The mechanics are working hard. It's nice for me as a driver to be able to come in and not have to worry about wrenching on things and working on things. And these guys have us back out on the track and, you know, fans never know it. Every one of those machines are 100% ready to go for today. And uh, kind of pretty much dedicate that to all these guys, plus players for making such an awesome machine. Once the cars come in off the track, you know, we got eight out there at a time. And in the worst case scenario, all eight could come in with problems. I mean, we got 25 cars under the tent and for us to all pull in, them just whip stuff out and it's awesome. I mean. Hats off to those guys for just working all weekend and never setting down a wrench and making sure we all get out there. The machine's a good, solid machine, but the track is, is an extreme example of what that machine's going to encounter. Mechanics really know what they're doing. The guys at Polaris and, and the other um, guys that are out here helping us, great guys. Um, they love doing it, and we love having them out here. A lot of the drivers come up and say, say thanks. This guys are doing a great job. Can't believe how fast you are. But, uh, you know, it's just part of the job. I don't know what I'm doing. I just drive them, ride them, and then hand it off to someone else. So having all the mechanics here, that's awesome. Come on, somebody hand Colton Moore a <laughs> wrench. Get in there, Colton. Must be nice. <laughs> Work on your gear. All right, Colton Moore, Levi LaValle, RJ Anderson, and the rest are getting ready. Men's main event. Race four, next. Tens of thousands of people on hand to enjoy 2015 Terracross race number four from North Branch, Minnesota. We've had a great day of racing action. It's the men's final. Up next to close race four. Levi LaValle pulling in right there next to Mitch Guthrie Jr. And Aaron's down the start line with our points leader. Well, you guys, your defending Terracross champion, Jason Luberg, is yet to win a race, even though he's come so close so many times. You've remained consistent. Runner-up position at round number three. How important is you to accomplish this task and take home a win today? Yeah, it's just getting personal. I just want to win now. I, uh, you know, winning a championship, you know, is just about consistency, but it's, you know, everybody keeps talking about it. You keep asking me, so I got to do that. <laughs> Jason, you also were uh, part of helping build this track design and build it. Does this work to your advantage at all? Uh, it, it's it's an advantage because I don't have to memorize the track as much. I know it because I build it. But um, you know, everybody gets a chance for their input. You know, if they got ideas, we we incorporate anybody's ideas. So it's definitely an advantage. I, I you know, hopefully it's not too much. Speaking of a chance to put in some input, it just so happens that right beside you happens to be Dana Creech, the other guy that happened to help build today's track. Guys, send it back to you. Thanks, Aaron. Alongside those two guys in the front row will be multi-time X Games gold medalist Colton Moore. He's looking for a good start. 
He's going to have to get past these two guys right here. Jason Luberg, 2014 champion, still without the victory. As he mentioned, he's feeling the pressure just a little bit. And then GoPros, Dana Creech. He's in the spot. We've seen so many hole shots from that inside. The Optimist starting grid has Mickey Thomas in the third row. He won the opening round this year. And then RJ Anderson in row four, winner of the last two races with some work to do. Yeah, he's probably not starting exactly where he wants to be, but you can never count that guy out because he's wicked fast. 15 buggies to the start of race four. Terra Cross underway. Good start by Creech, smooth through the first corner. That's the smoothest launch we've seen by anyone. Luberg also out to a good start. He'll go outside in that second turn. Look at that, Chris Barant. Did he just slide into the second spot? Oh, no, couldn't quite make it stick. No, he kind of got hung up inside the turn. Looks like everyone's away fairly clean. Ant Hills and then the Fox Proving Grounds. Boy, look at the way those <laughs> UTV razors soak it up. And they are, the boys are switching lines and definitely not trying to play follow the leader around on this first lap. There's Anderson followed closely by LaValle. LaValle finishing fifth in race three. He's looking for a better result. He'll have to come from mid-pack. Dana Creech looking good. Boy, he is on those outside lines. Look at this Walker Evans whoop section. We'll see Luberg's following Dana Creech. Looks like everybody else is trying something a little bit different. You've mentioned how much speed can be carried through those outside lines. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they, if, you hit, if you hit your mark smooth, you can really rail the corners at the end of each of those outside lines. 12-lap race strategy a little bit different. Maybe if you're Jason Luberg, you can take some time and take watch the line so you can follow for a little while. Yeah, there, there's a level of patience you have to have. If you push too hard, make a mistake, run into somebody that's in front of you trying to make a pass, there's all kinds of things that can happen. You need to find a spot to make it clean and make it stick. It's GoPro on board with Dana Creech in that GoPro factory Polaris 1000. What does his body language in this view tell you? You know, he's not looking too aggressive. His hand movements, he looks really confident. That's what that's screaming at me right now, and it's showing in his drive. Showing in his position, too. He is up front. Luberg closely behind. Just over a second back again, choosing that same line. The top four guys all taking that same outside line. They, uh, they must know something that I don't. Let's go on board now with Chris Barant, who sits in third. He'll take the inside here before the floater. A little bit out of shape. <laughs> Looking over his shoulder to see where he's at, if anybody's going to try and cut underneath him or push him out, I guess should, I should say in that case. Oh, the anthills, oh. and look at the <laughs> roost coming getting in. Getting pasted. <laughs> Bouncing over, here's the oh, mangler. Oh, you just stare at the oh, sun for a bit, yeah. huh? Yeah, it just pops you directly straight up in the air. You have no idea where you're going or what's in front of you. It's, it's kind of a little bit scary for a second. Terrific GoPro onboard looks there. Mickey Thomas, look at the movements he's made already. From row three, he's already into fourth. And RJ Anderson sitting in that sixth spot, I would have expected him to make a little bit quicker move to the front of the pack. Here's Creech, still using those outside lines, riding those outside berms. He's opened up a bit of a lead over Luberg. Barant trying to put some pressure on the number one. Creech just so smooth around that line. Yeah, he's looking really good. I mean, you see him rail that outside corner. Not a lot of guys were taking that before, but Creech is making it look easy. Taking a long way around, but it is the fast way around so far for the GoPro Razor. Up and over the mangler with ease. Now here is the race. Look at this. Three guys for second place. Luberg followed by Barant and the 44 of Mickey Thomas. It would be great to see Barant end up on the podium. Hasn't had the best luck in Terracross. And you know, he's an X Games gold medalist himself. He actually won the very first ever winner X Games snowmobile freestyle. Here's a guy still looking for a win. Jason Luberg putting himself in position once again. You have to be in it to win it. He is right in second place with a shot. If he's going to get his first victory, what does he have to do here? Keep driving smart, but he's going to have to start pushing his limits a little bit. He's letting Barant go. Oh, he might be fading back to third here in a second. He has company. Chris Barant taking that inside line. Oh, he burned oh, the burn. Was it enough? He... For a moment, it looked like it was. Here comes Luberg up the inside. Oh, they're going to get into each other a little bit. Still getting into each other over, over the first hunt. Oh, Luberg not letting up. And oh, it's Barant no. all of a sudden misses uh, out of gear. 
Now Barrett has somebody next to him. That's Mickey Thomas. So all the action happening in second has to bode well for Dana Creech. Creech up front and looking for another win in Minnesota. The 2015 Terracross Championships on CBS Sports Network is being brought to you by Polaris Razor. And by Mystic Lubricants, the official racing lubricant of Terracross. Learn more at mysticlubes.com. Race four, the 2015 Terracross Championship. Kevin Barnett alongside Paul Facker watching the creature feature <laughs> as Dana Creech is dominating this round. Yeah, he's putting in a pretty solid run. And, you know, Dana's got that win or crash trying kind of attitude and looks like it's working for him today. Uh, he's still throwing it a little sideways over the over-under. <laughs> as a GoPro on board once again with Dana Creech. Get his body language. He's looking pretty smooth, man. I mean. That's a, that's a guy that is right where he wants to be right now. What's that like when you're just feeling the track that way? It's a little bit like floating on air, I think. You know, you're, you're hitting your marks, you're confident, you're smooth, everything's working for you. It doesn't get a whole lot better than that. In the zone, Dana Creech right now. And in a battle, Jason Luberg with RJ Anderson. RJ has made his way to the front, looking at a podium spot right now. And Luberg's gotta be looking at his rear view mirror a little bit, I think. <laughs> I don't think you can race looking backwards, can you? <laughs> Luberg hanging on. Creech out front, Mystic Mangler, and you can see in the background there, second and third going over the anthill. Looks like about a five second gap. <laughs> Dana Creech is feeling pretty good about this one. <laughs> Taking the white flag with a fist bump, I like it. <laughs> Creech on the final lap. I don't know, that. He, sometimes those things backfire on you. Get excited a little too quickly. Creech won round three here in Minnesota last year, setting up for another fun weekend at Heydays. He's taking the outsides most of this main event. Even through the lap traffic, he still likes those outside lines. Yeah, you know, he's found some fast, fast lines and he's stuck with them pretty consistently through the whole race. Hills and then Mystic Mangler right after the Fox Proving Grounds. And we are less than a quarter of a lap. <laughs> and <laughs> looking like he's in a parade is Dana Creech. Giving a little wave to the crowd. He's pretty excited. <laughs> is that a float Whoa. or a factory Polaris Razor out there? Checkered flag flies. Creech with the win. Luber coming home in second again. Luberg back to back second places. He holds off RJ Anderson. Holy smokes, the points race is going to be tight. Excitement and exuberance from Dana Creech as he led from start to finish. Yeah, he had a great start. You know, qualified well, had that inside starting grid spot. Been so good all weekend. And he, man, he never looked back. Jason Luberg found himself in a battle a few times, first with Chris Barant, and then later it was RJ Anderson trying to pull him. Yeah, Luberg actually, he had some heat on him several times in this race, and he came through with a solid second place finish. A look at the general insurance final results. Third place, RJ Anderson on the podium. Levi Lavalle for the second race in a row is in fifth. And then after being in contention early, the 44 of Mickey Thomas, he ends up in eighth. Let's go down to Aaron now with our Polaris winners interview. Well, it just so happens that our two course builders finish first and second. Dana Creech, congratulations finishing that first place. And once again, Jason Luberg in that second spot. So did you happen to know that he was setting the fastest lap time on the last lap? Were you aware that he was catching you? Oh, yeah. I was watching Jason the whole time. He's out of everybody on the track. This is the guy I got to watch out for because I know you'll run me clean, but this guy's just as fast as me anywhere out there. And uh, 
I was really worried out there on the start more than any other start because we're right by each other and we don't want to hit each other. We're best friends. You don't want to touch each other. Like we try to run so clean with each other. And same with RJ. We're really good friends with him. He runs us clean, but this guy out of everybody, don't want to touch him. <laughs> Dana, perfect job from start to finish. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And Jason, obviously you ran into some lappers out there. Maybe you could take us through that. And you also had just mentioned that you were surprised that you actually finished. Can you tell us why? Yeah, I have a mechanical issue going on. I'm not sure what it is. It just wasn't quite right, so that's why I fell back. But, yeah, the lappers, they, they play um, – you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know where they're going to go, um, and that could really change things a lot. But, luckily, I got through it, and, you know, RJ got through it. Dana, you also were passing people. So it, it just adds a cool element to the race. Congratulations, gentlemen. A great race for the fans here today. A look at the overall standings. Luberg still in first, but R.J. Anderson, he's cleaned up his consistency. Absolutely. He's been, he wins races and then he doesn't finish some races. He'll take that third place finish and those precious points to put him in second place in the championship. Two podium finishes for R.J. Anderson on the weekend and Mickey Thomas still in third. He is part of the championship conversation. For my partners, Paul Thacker and Aaron Bates, I'm Kevin Barnett saying goodbye from Minnesota. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports.